Hey Globetrotters, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lori, and in this community, we strive to educate, motivate, and inspire each other in all things travel related. If you love all things travel, then you have found your people. So feel free to click on that subscribe button, be sure to hit that notification bell, and be sure to also share this video with others who love travel as well. So in today's video, what I'm going to share with you is a number of tips, 15 tips actually, you've probably seen the thumbnail, 15 tips about how to survive traveling in economy. Now, back in the day, we used to call it coach. People don't call it coach anymore. I guess it sounds a little bit crass. So how to survive traveling in economy. Most of us want to do as much traveling as possible in 2024. As a matter of fact, the research shows that Americans are planning to do more travel, if not the same amount of travel as they did in 2023. So I'm sure you want to stretch your dollars as much as possible. If so, make sure that you check out the video that I did about Travel Deal Tuesday, which is coming up the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, so the Tuesday after you know Cyber Monday, so that you can make sure that you get the best deals possible and get to those as many locations as possible in 2024. So you are probably like me and you're probably mostly traveling economy. I want to go to as many places as possible. I don't know, I've been out of the country at least three times this year already. And so I don't travel business class unless someone else is paying for it. I don't travel, you know, um, first class unless I'm getting a, an upgrade or something like that. And so I'm not paying thousands of dollars unnecessarily is what I'm saying for an airline seat. So if I happen to get one of those seats, then great. If not, then more than likely, I'm also in economy with you. So I have some tips that are my surefire ways, even with a bad back, my surefire ways of getting you safely to your destination, comfortably to your destination, and maximizing your experience as much as possible. So let's just get right into it. The first thing I would say is regarding seating, the first couple of tips. Choose an aisle seat if you can. If you can select the seat that you wish to have, then select an aisle seat. If you're going internationally and there are three sets or three columns of seats on the airplane, then try to get the column in the middle. I know everyone wants to sit in the window seat because they want to get those cool photos. They want to get the, the, the nice pictures. They want to be able to lean up against the wall and sleep undisturbed. But guess what? When it's time for you to get up and move around and stretch your legs and everything else, someone else or at least two other people are in your way. So I always opt for the aisle seat. In each of my frequent flyer accounts with the airlines, I have that I prefer an aisle seat. And so I will usually elect for an aisle seat so that I can get up, so that I can stretch around, so that I can move about quite a bit. Here's the other reason why I tell you to select the column of seats that's in the middle of the airplane, because then if you're sitting on an aisle seat in the middle and someone say in that middle seat needs to get up, they can always disturb the other person instead of you if you're sleeping. So they're less likely to be seat disruptions if you're sitting in an aisle seat in the middle column of the aircraft. Also regarding selecting your seat, try to select a seat away from the restroom, or away from the bathroom. I will pay for a seat just so I'm not by the bathroom. Usually those seats also do not recline. Remember I showed you in a previous video about going onto Seat Guru to look at the ratings for each of those seats and you will see like a color coded rating for good, for good seats, better seats, bad seats. And so you want to select a seat that reclines. You want to select a seat that has um, a location away from the bathroom. So this will help you in your long haul flight. The third tip is to dress in comfy layers. I showed you a video recently about how to dress for travel in the winter time and notice that I didn't have things with zippers on them. Yes, I had a pair, one pair of jeans on and that was the only thing. 
but um, there are no zippers, there are no underwires for ladies for your brassieres, there are no uh, uh, uncomfortable, you know, shapewear, there are no waist trainers, there's none of that kind of thing because I want to have as comfortable a fight as possible. If I don't have a lay flat bed, then I want to make sure that I'm as comfortable as possible in the attire that I'm wearing. I'm not going to wear stiletto heels. I'm not going to wear, you know, um, 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 hot, uncomfortable shoes, anything like that. I'm going to make sure that I'm as comfortably dressed as possible for travel. Tip number four is to pack a change of clothing as well as a change of underwear in your carry-on. And I mentioned this before when I was talking about how to pack and how I pack smartly because you never know if your bag, that is your carry-on, and I travel carry-on only, if your carry-on luggage, your suitcase, I, I pack this in my personal item, what goes underneath the seat in front of me. You never know if your carry-on luggage will be gate checked. So you wanna make sure that you have something that you can change into. What if the waitress, the not the waitress, but what if the flight attendant spills something on you or your neighbor in the seat right next to you spills a drink on you or something like that and you're soaked? Do you want to sit the rest of the flight just completely soaked? No. Well, you'll have a change of clothing, you know, so that's a good thing. So make sure that you have a change of clothing in case, you know, the, you know, the, un, the unforeseen happens. The next tip is to pack some compression socks with you. You want to make sure that you are as prepared as possible, especially, again, I said on those flights for four or more hours, I wear compression socks. I recently switched to these like skin tone ones for me because I like to be able to wear them, you know, and not feel like I'm sticking out too much, especially if, you know, I'm sitting down and you can see my socks. It just looks like, like my skin um, when my pants come up a little bit if I'm wearing pants. And so I put these on when I get onto the airplane. Um, if they're uncomfortable for you to, if, if, if they're difficult for you to put on, especially if you have nails and they're difficult for you to put on, some people put them on before they get on the airplane. But for me, I put my compression socks on when I get on to the airplane. Tip number six is to eat when you're fed. Now there's a caveat to this that will come with the last, the very last tip that I give you. So make sure that you stay tuned for that one. But eat when you're fed. The flight attendants that come around serving you food, they don't always come around when you're hungry. And they're sometimes back there taking a rest. They've put away the food. And so you don't know when there will be food coming. The other reason why you eat when you're fed is because they actually know what time it will be when you get where you're going with the plane. So they know your destination and the time at your destination. So they're trying to time your meals to the timing of the destination to help to avoid jet lag, to try to get your body attuned to whatever time it is where you're going, the time of day. And so that helps you to get into the, the swing of things and helps to minimize the effects of jet lag. Next tip is that you want to avoid salty foods. Again, on the airplane, the I think I told you once before in another video, but the humidity is about 10%. It's very dry on aircrafts. So you wanna make sure that you're as hydrated as possible and eating salty foods will just dehydrate you. And along those same lines, tip number eight is to avoid drinking too much alcohol. Again, the dehydration factor, the factor that that alcohol is also a diuretic, so it can have you up and moving and going to the bathroom quite a bit. So especially for people like me who are borderline germaphobes and do not use the aircraft uh, bathrooms unless absolutely necessary, yes, I will not be overdoing it on the plane with alcohol. Tip number nine along those same lines is to stay hydrated. You want to sip water because if you are drinking it very quickly if you're gulping it it's just going to pass through your system but if you're sipping it then it, it will actually become absorbed in your system and your system will be fully hydrated and fully saturated the next tip is to use carbonation if you feel queasy so i usually like to drink my preferred drink anyway um, especially at restaurants is sparkling water and so carbonation can help with that queasy feeling if you're the kind of person who gets uh, motion sickness, then carbonation can help with that queasiness on the plane. You also, if you're going to drink a soda, a carbonated beverage that's sweetened, then 
opt for ginger ale, which is better than the sweeter options like your Cokes and your Sprites and your Pepsis and such. In your personal item under your seat in front of you, you also want to make sure that you pack your tummy aids, speaking of that queasy feeling that you may get. And so I pack, you know, whether it's um, gas X pills, whether it's my charcoal pills, which help with an upset stomach so that it can actually like neutralize the bad bacteria in my gut. So I don't have to use the restroom or I don't use the restroom as frequently if something does not agree with me. Preferably, I won't eat on the plane, but if it's a very long flight and I'm hungry, yes, I'm going to eat on the plane. Of course, it may also tie into that last tip that I have for you guys, so stay tuned for that. Also, in your personal item bag under the seat in front of you, you want to pack personal hygiene wipes. I don't know what your preference is. Some people, especially for women, they like like the Summer's Eve wipes. Some people like the wipes that are from the deodorant companies and you know what have you i just like a plain old baby wipe i like a plain old unscented baby wipe because my skin is very sensitive and um, i will choose i will opt for the sensitive skin wipes whenever possible you probably have seen in my videos in the past if i'm in the car then there are some wet ones wipes behind me wet ones tends to be the ones that don't irritate me and don't give me blisters and such and so i have the sensitive wet ones and then i have the, the antibacterial wet ones for my hands but you can also use them to you know uh, clean up your pits and such and I like to carry not only personal hygiene wet wipes but also a packet of tissues so you know Kleenex is the brand that people usually associate with, with these but I like to carry a pack of personal t uh, tissues because I don't use the toilet paper in the general restrooms if I do use the restrooms and so I use those wet wipes and the tissues if I do use the restrooms. Another thing, talking about using the restrooms, these are all grouped together like this on purpose. I actually did some research and, did, and put some thought into the grouping, the categorization of these. So I hope that you appreciate that. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button, just for the fact that I actually sit down and pre-plan and script and all of that stuff, have my bullet points set out for me to make sure that you guys can have a organized, educational, uh, as well as enjoyable experience when you come to this channel. So speaking of using the restroom, do yourself a favor and do everyone else a favor on the plane and bring yourself some poopery. Now, I have this in my home as well. I have the smaller travel size because, you know, the liquids can go through security without any issues. But I have like the giant jug that I refill these smaller ones with. And I have this in each of the restrooms in my home. And I also travel with this because I don't want to be in a... <laughs> in a hotel room with someone who does not use this. I don't want to be in a hotel room with myself if I don't use this. And if you've never heard of this, it's basically a neutralizing spray, but it also has, some of them have fragrances, like there's a citrus fragrance, I think, there's a lavender fragrance, but basically you spray it into the toilet bowl, uh, four or five sprays, quick sprays, but it seals the scents into that area and it doesn't come out and spread all over the place and so you know it doesn't but just in case you go into the airplane toilet and someone did not have some poopery and you're going to do a number one instead of a number two you may want to just use this especially if you're also sitting if, if if you were not fortunate to have your seat to choose your seat away from the restrooms and you're seated right next to the restrooms you may want to have some poopery on you. So pack this in your personal item bag as well. Speaking of scents and feeling good and smelling good, I like to have my gum and my mints also packed in my either my crossbody bag or my personal item underneath the seat in front of me because I <laughs> I have been stuck on a plane before with in, in the middle seat, not the aisle seat, in the middle seat where both individuals on either side of me were not the most pleasant smelling, if you can imagine what I'm talking about. And so we were stuck on the tarmac on a warm day for several hours and the air was not moving in that airplane. Now I had a charger that I was able to turn on the fan for my charger and you know blow that air away from my face so that I, I only got fresh air coming in, but I also was able to pop a mint in my mouth 
which very quickly gave me something different to inhale. And if I had some gum, I would have popped some gum in my mouth, but that's probably a little bit more annoying because I tend to, to crack my gum. Sorry for all the people who know me. But I do have my mints and I will pop one of those or two of those or three of those, whatever is necessary to ameliorate the situation. And so I will pop those in my mouth and just, you know, suck on those and have something else, something else fragrant because, you know, the olfactory senses are connected. So I will... Yeah, and that will just freshen up the whole thing for me, the whole experience for me. <laughs> this video has gone downhill fast. Okay, thank you for watching thus far. Now for our last tip, final tip, drum roll please. Airport lounges, yes. We're getting fancy, yes. Now, if you watched my videos on Italy and you watched the last video, me coming back from Italy and trying to get back from Milan and getting stuck in the airport in Istanbul, Turkey, then you will know that I did not have access to a lounge. And so I sat in the airport for I don't know how many hours instead of going to a lounge. Now, that alone made me apply for one of those airline credit cards. But if you don't have access to one of the airline credit cards and a few of them, some of the higher priced ones and by higher price I mean that you pay a fee, an annual fee. So $95, $295, up to about $695, depending on the on the credit card. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you can go watch the video that I have on the different airline credit cards and which one may be right for you. In any event, I recently applied for one of those, so make sure that you stay tuned because I'm going to be taking you guys behind the scenes of these airport lounges to see how, how the other half lives. Because unless you are traveling business class or above, you're not going to necessarily have access to these lounges. Now, the people who are always traveling for business and their companies are paying for these flights, they're, they're getting access. They're getting access. And it is like a world away from everything else. There's no, you know, uh, uh, fighting for seats and, and, and wondering if the Wi-Fi is going to work. It is by a pass only. And I'm going to get the priority pass one because you don't have to have a business class seat. That's the secret. You don't have to have a business class seat. You can go directly to priority pass and you can select the pass that works best for you. I will be reviewing that for you guys here on the channel, so make sure that you uh, stay tuned for that. Make sure that you're subscribed. Even if you have an economy seat, a seat in coach, you can still buy your way into one of those first class lounges where the people who are sitting in first class and the people who are sitting in business class have access to those lounges. Of course, you're gonna have way cleaner restrooms, it's going to be exclusive access. It's going to be uh, access to food, depending on the time of day. Make sure that, that you check when you're flying to make sure that the lounges are open. Not every airport has a lounge and not every program has lounges, has access to all of the lounges at all of the, air, of the airports. So it's, it's a little bit more complicated, can't get into it in this video. For the purposes of this video, you can purchase access or utilize the access on one of your travel credit cards. Check it in case you don't know if you already may have access, especially if you already have that TSA pre-check global entry credit, you may also have access to those lounges and not even know it. So have access to the lounge. You can go into that lounge, you can take a shower, you can get a hot meal, you can grab a drink if you prefer to have an alcoholic drink or a hot beverage or whatever it is that you need. You can even have sleep pods in some of those. I hear the ones in say the Middle East and like Qatar and, and, and uh, Abu Dhabi and, and all of those, they are amazing, amazing. And so trust me, I will be traveling and giving myself some extra time because I'm usually one of those that tries to get there just in time to get through security and get on the plane and everything like that. Next year, I am really, really going to take you guys and show you behind the scenes of traveling in style for not a lot of money. Yes. So I hope that these were very, very helpful to you. I hope that you found these both educational and entertaining, and I hope that you were inspired to maybe look a little bit deeper into some of these different tips that I gave you for how to survive a long haul trip in economy. Of course, you can always go economy comfort and those kinds of things, but those are the basic things, you know, those are the, the like, everybody knows those, everybody knows those. I was thinking of giving you some ideas for how you can be more comfortable that you may not have thought of before. So tell me what you think of. 
down below. What do you think of this video? What was your favorite tip? What are some of your tips for surviving the flight, the long haul flights and economy? Guys, if you like this video, of course, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It's a free and easy way of supporting the channel. As always, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you value experiences over things because travel is the only thing you buy that truly makes you richer. Ciao.